Donald Trump said, and I quote, that Ford will, quote, fire all of its employees in the United States as you move all of that small car production uh, to Mexico in the next two to three years. Is he right? Well, Poppy, it's really unfortunate when uh, politics get in the way in the facts. And the facts are Ford's investment in the U.S. and commitment to American jobs has never been stronger. I mean, we have created uh, more than 28,000 jobs in the U.S. in the last five years. We've invested more than $12 billion. We produce more vehicles here in the U.S. than any other uh, automaker by far. And we employ more hourly workers here in our plants more than any automaker by far. So we are very committed here. And those are the facts. So it is not true that Ford will be, quote, firing all of its employees in the United States. Will Ford cut any U.S. jobs as a result of this move? One, any single one? A absolutely not, zero. And what we announced is that we'll be moving our, uh, our focus out of Michigan uh, so that we can, we can compete more financially in that particular segment. But at the same time, and that's an agreement we have with the UAW, and what we'll be doing is we'll be replacing those products with two very exciting new products, so not one job will be lost. And mm -hmm. most of our investment is here in the U.S., and that's the way it's going to continue to be. So Mr. Trump is wrong. Is that correct, Mark? That is correct. Okay. The, here's the concern, because when you, when you are opening this $1.6 million billion dollar plant in Mexico, you will be creating new jobs in Mexico, about 2,800 new jobs. So the question is, why are you creating those jobs in Mexico and not in the United States? Well, first off, we create jobs in many of the places that we do business. As I said earlier, we've created over 28,000 jobs in the, here in the U.S., and we're going to be retaining or creating another 8,500 over the next three or four years here in the U.S. And we are, we're, we're a global company, and we mm -hmm. produce in many different places, and this is around grow, growing our company globally, of which, by the way, all the profitability for those global op operations come back to the U.S. where we then can decide where do we invest that going forward. And as I mentioned, a majority of that investment is done here in the United States. Is Ford still a U.S. company, and it, do you see a responsibility to keep a certain amount of jobs in the United States, or is this about global competitiveness in 2016? Well, it's about both. It is about global competitiveness in, in, in the day and age we are, because clearly as a company, we have to be competitive because that way we earn a good return, we can reinvest in our business and keep growing jobs. At the same point, we feel very strongly that it's important for us to be strong in our home market. And we have a very strong market share here. As I mentioned, we employ more hourly workers than any other automaker. The majority of our investments for R&D are done here in the U.S. Yes, it's extremely important for us to be strong in our home market, and we are. All right. Donald Trump also said today, reiterating something he said before, that if you do this and if he's president, he will slap a 35 percent tariff on cars made in Mexico imported to the United States. To be clear, he would have to have Congress's backing to do that. And the last time a big tariff was instituted in the United States back during the Great Depression, all the economists agree it made the Great Depression worse. So put that aside, is there anything that Donald Trump could do if president that would convince Ford not to move this production to Mexico? Well, listen, overall, as I said, we're a global company. We invest globally. You know, whatever administration is, is in power, you know, we as elected, we have a history of a comp as a company of working with every administration with the goal of having economic development in mind, not only for our yeah. home market like the U.S., but wherever we do business. So we'll work but, with whoever is in the White House. As but we is there do. anything, I mean, is there anything, let, just to make it really clear for the American people, right, is there anything that the next president could do that would make you say, all right, fine, you know, those jobs, you know, we're not going to make this investment in Mexico. We're not going to build those cars there. Well, as I said, we invest most of our money uh, in the U.S. Uh, from an R&D and now a manufacturing standpoint in North America. But clearly, uh, you know, looking at the tax code, simplifying that, uh, regulatory certainty is, is always very beneficial. And also a, a level playing field when it comes to, uh, to trade agreements. And those, we think, will continue to be very important 
as we look to uh, do our part to drive economic development here in the U.S. So, so if Trump were president and able to get a 35 percent tariff, would you still build the cars there if the rest of the tax landscape looked the same? Well, listen, Poppy, there's lot, lots of hypotheticals. We have to run our business on what we know today. And as right. I said, we're running our business but, and our plan to invest in the U.S. and globally. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, let me ask you this, Mark. Um, you have been, you know, up until today, right now, you have not come out and publicly responded to the slams that Donald Trump has made on Ford on your company. You made the decision today to do so. Why? Why respond now? Well, well, we have, we have laid out the facts uh, over the last year of many of the things that have been said on the campaign trail. And as we said, you know, our role is to just lay out the facts. And, you know, facts are stubborn things sometimes, and, but, they, but they're their facts. And we're going to continue to lay them out in a, in, a, in a season of a lot of political activity. But why you? Why are you speaking out now as the CEO of Ford? I mean, you in the past have not directly chosen to respond to Mr. Trump. I know you've written him a letter before laying out the facts, but, you know, is this personal to you at this point, Mark? Well, overall, we just want to set the facts straight. And, you know, we have talked about this in the past. We will continue, Poppy, just to continue to lay out the facts. And the facts are is our commitment to investment and jobs in America has never been stronger. I spent the last few days in, in, in Ohio, all over the state, yesterday, all day in, in southern Ohio along the Rust Belt, where a lot of those auto jobs have disappeared. And a number of those workers, even some lifelong Democrats, told me they are voting for Donald Trump. And they told me they believe that he can bring those manufacturing jobs back to the United States. The thing is, Mark, they believe that Donald Trump will, as they told me, try. They feel like he's the only one who will try. What do you say to those workers? Well, what I say to those workers is when it comes to Ford, our commitment to investing and creating jobs here in the U.S. has never been, has never been bigger. And even Ohio, we have a number of plants in Ohio that we've invested in over the last five years, creating some great jobs. And we will continue to do that no matter who is in the White House. Labor costs. Let's talk about labor costs. Those are a huge part of this decision of Ford's to, to build these small cars in Mexico because they are less profitable uh, in the United States. And the labor costs are really at the core of it. Mark, what will your labor costs be in Mexico at that new plant to make these cars versus what they would be in the United States on a per hour, per day basis? Well, on a relative basis, though, they are lower, but, you know, for the segment that we're competing in, in the small cars, it's a very competitive segment, and consumers here in the U.S. are looking for good value in that right. area. And, you know, we're up against competition, and a lot of them are producing cars in those lower-cost areas. So for us to be competitive and then provide that value to consumers, it's really important for us to look at every element of the business and at the same time make sure we're producing cars and trucks here in the U.S. that do exactly the same give thing. Us, give us the comparison, if you, if you could, Mark, please, on, on the labor cost per hour per day there versus the United States. Give people a picture of what you're talking about. Well, I can't give you an exact figure off the top of my head, but it, but it is lower. Uh, but I mean, as are I we said, talking it's in about 10, 20, 30, 40? Uh, I mean, you guys made the calculation to move down there. What, what percent roughly lower? It's, uh, you know, off, off the top of my head, it's probably about somewhere in the neighborhoods of about 40 percent lower. Okay. But that's what it takes to compete in that segment. Okay. Um, let, let's talk about, you know, the, the, the big picture here. When, when you look at the United States and, and competitiveness, um, you're, mm -hmm. the, the argument here is that you would make more money on these small vehicles making them in Mexico, and that would therefore make Ford more profitable overall. Can you say then definitively that a sizable chunk of that money will be reinvested in the United States, in workers here, in plants here? Well, when you look at our investment here in North America, literally almost 95% uh, of our investment in terms of uh, research and development is done right here in the U.S. and probably in the neighborhood about 80 percent of all of our capital expenditures. So, you know, our profitability around the globe, we're a global company. Uh, all those profits come back here to the U.S. where we then decide where we're going to spend it. But clearly, it's really important for us to be strong in our home market 
both from an assembly and a research approach, and that's exactly what we do. All right, final question. Uh, a number of CEOs have come out in the past few months backing a presidential candidate. Are you, are you making a public endorsement? Will you? No, 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 I am not. Mark Fields, I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much.